I've got something very, very different ready for you guys and gals to see. In fact, I've never seen it. I, oh, I've seen it at a trade show. I saw it at MOE show late last year, November 2019 is when I saw it uh, hanging there. You can kind of take a peek at it, but now it's the final version in this box. And let me tell you what, when this thing showed up, I was like, oh, it is, for the size, it is crazy heavy. So uh, we're not gonna waste any time. I'm just gonna dive right in on this one. And this thing's been taped up. This might take me a few minutes to dive into. So what we've got inside is something very unique. It's gas blowback, I do know that. And I caught myself doing this. There we go, all right. Wow, okay. Here we go, that's why, okay, that explains why it is heavy. So um, let me just do my best not to knock the camera down with all the box stuff. This is a very interesting packing job. You probably know what it is just by the title of the book here. Like this thing weighs a hard bag. So this is the Stin Machine Carbine if you want a fully unabridged, um, anyway, we're not doing a review on a book, right? We'll, we'll check it out later. Inside of here, a box in a box, this is gonna be what we're looking for. Let me do my best to get it out. Um, definitely not retail packaging, that is for sure. A lot of times I'll end up with the factory samples on these. So inside of here, we are going to find, if I pick the right side to open it, There we go. Actually, it is retail packaging, just flipped inside out. This, we have the Northeast Sten Mark V. So on this one, actually my two, operating instructions. So in the box, we've got how everything works. Again, this is made by a company called Northeast, rather new company to the Airsoft game. So let's go ahead and do that. Move all the packaging out of the way so I have room to do this. Ooh, this is interesting. This is the Mark V. I thought I was getting the Mark II. So you guys may have saw some videos pop up on the internet for the Sten Mark II, which is like the ugly, like they had to get it out quick, get it into World War II and get service going to combat against the Germans and the MP40 and all the stuff that was going on uh, with their superior firepower. Holy moly, this thing weighs a lot. Um, but this is the Mark V, the more refined, older, younger sibling. You know, I guess it would be the younger sibling. So the, the first one has to pave the way, but the second one is the one that gets like all the good stuff. And this one got all the wood. Wow. Okay. So first thoughts on this, uh, it's heavy. So we have the main body of the gun. Let's go ahead and just keep working on what we got here. We've got the stock. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Look at the back. Oh my goodness. Picked a bad day to trim my fingernails. Look, they even got the storage in the back, the butt, and the all real wood, like really dark stained wood. Okay, like we're talking, I mean, steel. This is not some junky metal cheapy stuff they're using some die cast zinc alloy i mean this is all steel through and through to be honest if you set this down in front of me without this magazine which by the way you can obviously tell um it's airsoft i would never ever ever know it wasn't a real one the magazine's heavy too so i was wondering why the box was heavy i was joking it was the book um it is definitely not that book it is this so, um, heck, while we're at it, let's go ahead. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I don't need a physics lesson to figure out how to put that on. Um, wow, okay. This thing, um, yeah. Okay, heavier than any other, what is in here? It still feels heavy. No, I guess it's it, it's just the cardboard packaging. No, oh, okay. This is definitely heavier than any other airsoft gun of its size I have picked up. I mean, by far, 
this thing is definitely beefy. So let's just kind of do some external stuff, then we'll get into like putting the magazine in, things like that, some functions. So let's just dive on into the outside of this thing first and give you my first unboxing impressions on it. So outside, like I said, trying to get this thing in the light so you can see it better, get all the contrast of the bits. It is like ugly beautiful. Now I know, like I said, the, the British government kind of rushed this thing out as fast as they could. They needed something to get to the troops. They needed to have something to combat against the MP40 out there in the battlefield. It was just chewing up their soldiers. And then that's where this came from. Um, by and far, it is so crazy. This is so well done. Like everything like that, I had to figure out, like I, this is all new to me. Like usually I can pick up an airsoft gun and be like, oh, this is how it works, right? No, like this is all totally new. So on this one to lock it back, you like all the way, right? So now the bolt's open, right? But it had a, this pin pushed in and went through a hole on this side. So it's like a locked in the closed bolt position. So wild, oh my goodness. This thing's so cool. Anyway, we're gonna take a look. I'm gonna lock this back because that just seems cooler. So tip to toe, uh, with the stock on, definitely first impressions is it is still front heavy. It's still got some umph. I haven't even put the mag in yet. We, we haven't even, it's, the mag's gotta rotate. We got like, there's like a rotation process. I need to keep this book handy because we're gonna have to go through it the correct way. Um, I can tell you right now, it's already a very front heavy gun based on its design. I think the Woodstock helps balance it into this empty position, like without the magazine in. But once you get everything in there, it's definitely gonna be uh, pretty darn beefy. Front and rear sights, I mean, the back sight's just a simple little dot. The front is kind of like a, just a fin that kind of gives you almost like a little post on that. I'm gonna see if I can maybe get it close so you can maybe see it. I know it'll be out of focus and stuff for you there, but maybe you can kind of see a little fin here in the front. In the back, we got a little, just a little tiny hole. It's all built into the metal body. This thing is, as far as I can tell, made of two materials three materials, steel, wood, and this looks like brass. Inside it looks pretty simplistic, but I'm sure it's not because we're talking about getting an airsoft version of a classic gun. This thing was easy to build. I'm sure plenty of companies would have done it already, <clears throat> but this is GBBR, okay? So keep in mind, we're talking about a gas blowback on this one, so it's really going to be a lot of kick. Uh, the magazine itself is 30 rounds. This thing is hefty like real hefty on the magazine. So in the magazine, there's no spring follower down the front. I think they went for realism on this thing. So you have to just kind of speed load it straight down and in. Um, everything, wow, the way even the valve works, it's down inside there. I don't know if you guys can, we'll see. I'll, I'll get you some photos, I'll do some photo overlays on this. The way the valve is like hidden back in there. So when it actually strikes a plate, which actually opens the valve to make everything look really realistic. So again, 30 rounds, so for you who are into the real sim, this is real sim. I mean, we're not gonna be like going out and going wild on the skirmishing with this, but I'm really super impressed. The wood is done very well. I can tell you that, the finish on it. I just know it's gonna weather in nice. It's gonna really get uh, like a lot of good like marks and shininess and rough spots on it. But brand new, it looks really good. They did a fantastic job. The quality of the wood's quite nice. For those of you that wanna really like weather this thing down and make it battle worn, I know some of you out there are gonna jump on one of these and get all over it. Um, markings on this, all we really have here on the side, it says uh, Sten Mark V M slash 78. And on this side we get M flash 78 and a serial number stamped. And these are all stamped in the steel on that. Um, on this we've got, I'm assuming the safety and the fire. So that's A and R. And then uh, you just very, very clicky like this button. I mean, listen to that. I mean, I'm sure rip headphone users, right? I'm probably peeking you already. I mean, it's very positive, very positive. There's no doubt at all. Trigger has got a lot of take up to it. So like the trigger itself, let me try to get it here so you can kind of see it. That's your take up. And then that's gonna be your break on it. So take up to there and then break to the back on that. Um, on this, that's your magazine release. It just looks good. I mean, the steel's got like this matte finish. The wood's done really well. You got the finger notches here. Obviously it'll be easier to hold once we get this all rotated out of the way. And all of that, I mean, flash hider. The inner barrel runs to about right there where the tip of my finger is. So it's a little shy of a centimeter short of the end of the barrel. I'm gonna guess that from the magazine, we're looking at the inner barrel length to be about like this. 
the span of my fingers. So I'm not sure the length on that's rather short. A lot of this back here is just gonna be like the guts. Oh, one more stamp here too. So you got a serial number here as well. Uh, the little number stamped here on the stock itself. So I am going to learn how to use this thing along with you guys and gals. That's the beauty of an unboxing video is uh, you don't really know what's going on, especially if it's a new gun. I feel like I'm learning a new product with you. So operating instructions. After unboxing, we're gonna rotate the magazine housing clockward, which is upwards, until the barrel nut catch fixes in the respective hole. So we're looking like, so here's the picture right here and we're going to be rotating it looks like we're going to match the photo here we're going to be rotating this housing clockwise that was pretty easy it just clicked into place okay cool so that's how this all right so that latch this latch right here this piece caught into that hole so once the thing is we heard that little twink and that's where it went so now the bolt is open all right Okay, all right, so now that everything's open and you can, you can see the bolt close on that. So inside of here, I'm not sure, I doubt you can see it. I'll get you a photo to go over top of it. Inside we, I can see where the gas blowback system is. It's actually sitting on its side because the magazine goes in on the side. So let me make sure I do this right. I don't wanna mess it up. I don't wanna screw things up. So let's do this. So it says safety device, so when this is then, Right, so this, this pin right here, so it says the safety, and now if you can kind of tell, it's got a little pin right here that's pushing up. And when I pull this, I'm gonna pull it, and it pulls it out of that hole, and it allows me now to charge it back. Otherwise, if that's down and locked, I can't do anything. So it renders the gun safe. So that's gonna be your safety. So once you fired it, it's rendered safe, and you're good. So you actually have to lift this, and I'm gonna put it in the locked position now. So it says, go ahead and fill the magazine, load the magazine, hold the magazine, hold the machine carbine with the right hand, forefinger outside the trigger guard, I like that. And we're gonna be taking the magazine, um, butt under the arm, pointed down 45 degrees, which I can't do on video. Take the magazine in the left hand, the groove and insert in the housing on the left side till you hear a click sound, okay. That was, that's the click, okay. And make sure it's fully homed, pull back the charging handle and move it to the safety slot. Okay, so I guess I could have done it with the charging handle or the bolt in the four position. All right, to unload the magazine, we're apparently we're gonna press this part right here and wiggle it out. It is definitely not the easiest thing. <laughs> that, is, that is definitely not the, the absolute easiest thing, that is for sure, um, to get to. But this thing mimics the real one. Oh, baby, that's good. Oh. All right, so this is it. I mean, that's your, I know a lot of the guys did this, right? They did the whole grab the magazine thing. I just feel like I want to, but I also like this. And to acknowledge what I thought, this is actually a quite, I really, considering this is gonna mimic a, a real full magazine is what I'm assuming here, this thing was probably not the easiest thing to field in the battlefield. I understand why they had it rotate to get everything out of the way, to make it easier to transport, but, First off, it just wants to do that. Like, cause the weight of this just makes me wanna just dump it. So I can see why you'd wanna grab it here. Second off, this sucker is heavy, comparative to its size. Like, to hold it up and to be able to get shots off, it, it's, it's got some oomph. Again, I'm not criticizing what Northeast Airsoft did. They did some fantastic work on this. I mean, I've seen photos of the Sten Mark V, I've seen the Sten Mark II, I've never held one in my hand, but I feel like I am now. But it is definitely a interesting gun, to say the least. Now, if you wanna make it a little more CQB friendly, you can push this in, you can just pop this old stock right off. We'll set that down here on the side. And now you got your little shorty where you can kinda go in clear rooms, although you still have that I don't even, I don't even know what you do. Like, maybe, I don't, I don't know. I think it needs the stock. It feels like it needs the stock. It definitely feels like it needs the stock. Well, stock's pretty easy to get on with one hand. So yeah, definitely feels like it needs it. So that's it. Um, You know, 
Externally, we're looking at this, functionality, we see it, maybe it's time to gas this thing up and give it some shooting. Now, according to the magazine, it says we definitely want to be filling the magazine with gas, and we're gonna do it for around seven to eight seconds, and that is it. Um, so it says seven seconds if you're using green gas, if you're using 134As or whatever the new alternative is in Japan, seven to eight seconds, do not exceed that. And it says on the magazine, which we're gonna even pull this out. There we go, set you down, that um, you wanna hold this and a direct fill. So we'll, we'll do that and uh, we'll see what happens. I'll go get a can of gas, be right back. So fresh can of green gas. Let's get this thing going. And it looks like seven seconds. It's very specific. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we're gonna stop there. All right, so seven seconds, 32 rounds. Right now I am not putting any BBs in here. I've also checked to see it's clear. So we're not gonna be worried about like eye protection, things like that. Um, always be safe, be smart about this. It's a brand new gun. I've already checked the, the bolt and everything. So everything's fully cleared. Um, I'm gonna put this out of the way, and we're gonna do a little bit of dry firing. Uh, for those of you, I will do my best not to uh, kill your ears if you're gonna be uh, headphone users. All right, on that. So, drop it in, uh, off save, gotta pull it out, pull it back, cock and lock, and, ooh, that is nice. Okay, let's see. Oh, there's a little bit of, Bit of extra gas cut in the barrel. That's pretty cool. All right. All right. This is crisp. Okay. First thoughts on this, just from shooting it the first time, uh, dry firing. We're, we're going to do some real live fire in a second. Um, is that it shoots better than I expected because this bolt feels, I guess it's got some arm for the spring. I figured maybe it wouldn't be as umphy? I don't know. Uh, the magazine does hold 32 rounds, by the way. So uh, a couple more semis. All right, and then I guess this is push it through the, there we go. Now we're gonna go full auto and see what it does. Ah! <laughs> you wanna talk about a fast mag dump? Oh, there we go, that's it. Uh, feels like there's enough gas for those of you who are counting if you want to slow it down I feel like you're gonna have a gas to BB ratio pretty good on this one um, My goodness uh, if you want to dump your 32 shots, you can sure do it fast uh, Wow This thing's fun. I thought it'd just be a collector's piece. This is fun. I Had no idea to adjust the hop-up from what I understand is you're going to have to take the barrel portion off to get to the hop up. That is going to be part of it. So we're going to be, I'm assuming, and then, yeah. So we have to get in here and do the hop up adjustment. So yeah, you pop this barrel assembly off. Let me just go ahead and stand up here. Um, but yeah, so if you need to do a hop up adjustment, that's gonna be it. But there's a huge, huge, huge wheel. Let's see if I don't know if I can even, right there. That part, that whole piece there, he's kind of uh, left and right. You take the front off, but the front off's pretty easy. You just saw it like just there. I was like, mm, pretty easy, huh? So all you got to do is just line that, get that barrel lined up till it drops in. So actually, let me do it on camera at the right height. So you've got this. If you've got it at the wrong angle, it won't go down there. And then once you find it, it just drops in and then just spin this thing around. So really, your hop up adjustment is not. If I can get the threads to start, there we go. Um, hop of adjustment's not that difficult, um, but they did a good job hiding it underneath everything. So that's gonna be your, so I pull my mic cable up. Um, that's gonna be the way you adjust the hop up. Once you get it set, it's gonna be set. It's not a really big deal there, it looks like. But yeah, that's it. This is the Stenmark 5. I am super impressed. I would weather this thing. It's stamped steel. It's this wood, I would put some weathering on it. The wood, I would do everything as your oils start to get into it and you use it and you throw it in the ground a bunch and get it scratched and beat up. And this thing starts to patina here, the brass plate on the back. This thing is just gonna be better and better, better looking. If you're a collector, I'm just gonna tell you right now, just go pick it up. I mean, like absolutely don't miss out. These are limited releases. Just get it. 
Um, if you're going to skirmish with it, I mean, there's obviously some limitations, 32 rounds, things like that, but the performance, I mean, you guys saw it, I mean, through the dry fire and then the actual chrono test, dang, this thing is, it works too. And that's the crazy part. It's not just looks, it actually works. And that is it. Oh. Grab some extra mags, 32 shots. You're going to go through these things pretty darn quick and they are heavy. So get ready for a, a real loadout. But for those of you doing like, you know, reenactment type World War II period pieces, it's not going to be a big deal for you. So anyway, let me know what you guys and gals think. Definitely a totally different unboxing video than what I usually have on the channel. Something not an M4, definitely not an M4. Um, I'm interested to hear your feedback and your thoughts on this. Uh, let me know if you want to see more about this or other World War II guns. If you want me to do like another unboxing on something that's new and neat out there. Um, I would love to hear your ideas in the comment section. If you haven't hit the sub button, I'd love to have you part of the family. And also check out the web store. I got a link in the corner uh, or down in the bio in the uh, description box below that'll take you to the web store. I've got a bunch of morale patches out there so you can check out like a whole bunch of cool stuff and uh, get some swag and support the channel. So anyway, until next time, go out, play some airsoft, get your Stenmark 5 on, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.